this is lovely. We've uh, been moored at Withnell Fold behind us, uh, where the old paper mill is, closed in 1976. And um, we're desperate for water. There's water about a mile and a half ahead of us at the top of the locks. So we've been waiting for a break in the weather. Not happening, it's just getting worse. So I decided to bite the bullet and get us down there. And uh, Fran's inside, there's no point in both of us getting wet. So yeah, Withnell Fold looks interesting actually. In the book it says it's worth a visit up to the village. But uh, not bothering <laughs> in this weather, that's for sure. But it's uh, an old paper mill that was opened in 1840 something and uh, to manufacture tissue and newsprint and then it was taken over by Wiggins Teeth paper makers and uh, turned into high quality writing paper but yet yeah, sadly closed in 1976 and it looks like it's been deteriorating ever since like a breach waiting to happen. Well we walked this towpath earlier and it's in pretty good nick to be honest so I'm a bit bemused as to why they've plonked 80 odd bags of aggregate along the towpath for the half a mile stretch. It really doesn't need resurfacing it's fine. I've seen a lot worse towpaths like Oxford Canal for instance which is virtually non-existent in places but it's it just I just get so frustrated when Canal and River Trust are pleading poverty and uh, government are reducing their funding and they go and do stupid things like this when it doesn't need doing Marple locks are closed because there's a gaping hole in one of them and uh, they reckon it's going to be shut for about a year until it gets repaired. Well, surely resources are better spent elsewhere. I mean, just look at that towpath. Not wrong with it. I'm not one for Canal and River Trust bashing. I must admit, you know, on the whole, I think they do a pretty good job, but. It's things like this that really do make you scratch your head. Well, as you can see, we've been collecting wood again from the side of the towpath. And uh, we had the heating on this morning for the first time, just to take the chill off. But uh, Fran's got to get the saw out and saw that up, because uh, we're going to have to light the fire soon enough, I think. Ideally, what we need is that flat there to be zippable so it lifts up out of the way. So on days like this, we don't have to put this lid down. Anyway, we're filling up with water and uh, the moorings are over there. So I guess in about 20 minutes, we'll be zipping over there. Well, that's us moored up for a couple of days. Till we go down Johnson's Hillock locks. There are seven of them. That can wait for a couple of days. Well, as sure as eggs is eggs, as soon as we've moored up and I've taken my wet clothes off, the rain stops and the sun's out. Well, we're in the town of Chorley and we're going for a walk uh, to the market this morning, isn't it? It's Tuesday, so there's a big market every Tuesday here. It's a flat iron market. I think, I don't know why it's called the flat iron market. There's an indoor market, but on Tuesday it's the flat iron market and we're going on a hunt for Chorley cakes. Chorley cakes? Chorl and I can't say Chorley, I can say Clangothlan, <laughs> but I can't say Chorley. But anyway, we're going on I a just said it. hunt for properly Chorley cakes. Yes, we've never been into the middle of Chorley before. We're parked just on the edge and um, yeah, looking forward to seeing what it's like in town. 
I think I'm going to be treated to a meal. Are you? <laughs> yeah, I've just decided. <laughs> well, we, we're in for a bit of weather apparently coming up the next few days with Storm Agnes. Not only a bit of weather, we have been issued an amber warning of wind. Who knew? Wind I think in it's the autumn. Here, getting up to the heights of 36 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> So yesterday uh, we took the opportunity to walk up a hill called Healy Nab. Some beautiful walkways through the hill and uh, views from the top were amazing. It was a big walk. We like a hill, don't we? But um, yeah, it keeps us fit, doesn't it? It does. We do like a hill. Another nice thing about it is we were back in proper woodland again. And um, it's one thing that was missing up where we had the mooring there weren't many woods around us that were was too there bloody high so. up there wasn't it for wood yeah, i know so many oak trees around here and yesterday was mushroom heaven they were everywhere but um we didn't pick any because we just weren't sure <laughs> anyway it's a, a fab walk got the lungs going a bit yeah. climbing up the hill and uh just took a little bit of footage not a lot so here we go <laughs> That structure in the background, that church, is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, otherwise known as Mormons. And uh, I think that's their main temple in the UK and people come from all over the world to train there and uh, spread the word. Francis. We thought it was time to clean the curtains, the walls. I've still got to do the window frames need polishing. But um, I made the mistake of washing one set of curtains. In the bedroom. Tried it out with the bedroom ones and they shrunk about that much. Mm -hmm. So I've had to readjust all the blinds in the bedrooms to just about make them fit. So it's cost us quite a bit of money to do this so if you're looking at getting boat curtains made check that your material is washable because <laughs> this was an expensive job but so they've been off for a couple of days haven't they they've been taken into the local town and uh dry cleaned and uh, all the spiders have gone <laughs> all the cobwebs have gone we've had a lot of spiders this year haven't we yeah absolute loads of i keep throwing them out the window anyway carry on you join us aboard Laura Maisie for the Worldwide Indoor Canasta Competition, <laughs> sponsored by floatingourboat.com. And uh, Fran's got a smile on her face because it's all looking rosy for her at the moment. Oh, yes. We're playing for the last square of Quality Street. Yeah, high stakes. High stakes. <laughs> and the scores are? Well, I've not added up yet, but wow. you're on 3,390. I'm on 3,035, but I think... I'm just about to go ahead. Yeah, but look, I've got three threes down I know. There. That's bad news. I think you're cheating. They came from your sleeve. Well, let's see who's cheating when somebody's got a smile on a face with a lump of chocolate in their mouth. Don't want the chocolate anyway. <laughs> 
I'm going to get the your umpires over because there, there was some cheating going on in that last hand, I'm sure of it. I never cheat. I might have been a numpty a couple of times, but yeah. I didn't cheat. <laughs> Where are we going, friend? We're going to Morecambe. Morecambe by the seaside. the seaside. It's exciting, isn't it? A chippy lunch on the beach with the doggies. And Storm Agnes has subsided. We're only a little bit of a few gusts of wind in the night, but it's going to be lovely today. Windy down the beach. Not impressed. What do you think of the show so far? Ruggish! Digging straight away. lovely day at the seaside friend we have yes once again beach walking doggies enjoyed it in the sea bit of sand digging <laughs> digging in the sand and uh, we've had a bag of chips so have the dogs <laughs> <laughs> a nice cup of coffee and a cake it's just nice to get away from the canal sometimes and get different scenery isn't it it's not been Very glorious nice. weather it's been fine but not glorious and there's nothing I hate to say it, there's nothing particularly glorious about Morecambe these days. No, it's a grand old town in the past by the looks of it. Yeah. But we've enjoyed ourselves, done something different for a change and uh, got to wait now an hour or so for the train back. And um, people going right. past. It's never, still never get used to talking to the camera when people are around. <laughs> so uh, yeah, head home. Gonna go and give the doggies another little run on the beach, aren't yeah. we? I think wear them out a bit while we're out. We're hoping to hear so. tomorrow what's going to happen with the closure of the locks at Wigan. So, um, if it's all go, then we'll get through. If not, if we have to wait around for a few weeks, which I think we might have to, then uh, we think we might take ourselves on a little holiday somewhere. Yeah, because there's only about 10 miles between us and the locks. And mm. if we go too far back the other way, we're going to hit Blackburn and Burnley again. And don't want to draw those locks. So, yeah, decision time tomorrow. Yeah. Make our mind out what we're going to do. All is good. Yeah, so I think uh, a certain little doggy is dying to get back in the water. <laughs> Trouble is, they're so noisy on the beach. They get so excited. Um, Barks like just mad, doesn't it? Drive us mad, let alone everybody else. So five minutes at a time is all they get. You ready, dogs? Right, come on, let's go. This might take some time.
the seaside yesterday. We're on the move today. It's quite a nice day, nice and dry. Um, but we've been in the same spots back at Chorley for six days now, so um, itchy feet again. Time to move on. Itchy feet and empty water tank. Empty water tank. <laughs> We've got to get some diesel and we've got to get a bottle of gas. So we're going to Ellebeck Boats just up the road here, about two miles from where we were. Fill up and uh, we've got an interesting cafe there. We might go and have a oh, look yeah. at Oh, yeah. And you deserve uh, something nice. You've been a good boy this morning, haven't you? Been a very good boy. Chopped up, Chopped loads up all that of wood. wood off the roof. Yeah. All yeah. gone. And. Um, so yeah, so we'll do that, fill up, and only just go another mile or so out of out on the edge of town if we can. Um, we've got some parcels to pick up in the town, do a little bit of shopping, and hunker down. We've got some friends coming at the weekend for lunch on yeah, Sunday. Yeah, and they've even put in an order of what they want me to cook. A bit cheeky really, but yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's about vloggers for you, they that's... like that. <laughs> So we finally left the noise of the motorway, the M65 nearby, uh, only to be replaced by the noise of the A6 on the other side. It has been a noisy stretch of canal actually, this is it? A whole, you know, almost the whole length of this canal you can hear road traffic, but... You do get used to it. Across the Pennines, it's, isn't it? You know, you know, it has yeah. To be. But, um, it's not so bad this time of year because you haven't got your windows open and you, you can block yeah. it out in summer. I think it would detract a little bit from the canal, I guess. I had a senior moment then. I <laughs> you did go a bit vacant, didn't you? Did you, did you see that, <laughs> folks? <laughs> I was going to talk Just about a gorgeous winter. Winter. Right senior moment. I was going to talk about the lovely autumn feel we have now and the colours, <laughs> what are changing. Oh, very poetic. I was going <laughs> <laughs> this, this is all because we listened to a podcast about W.H. Auden last night, so he's in a poetic mood I... today, aren't you? Yes. It well. is, and actually we've just uh, been cruising along and the first scene that you get when you're just going along and the wind blows and all those leaves trickle down, it's the first time that's happened yeah, this year. Absolutely. And the fire has been lit um, quite a going. few times, hasn't it? Um, um, Storm Agnes turned yeah. out to be a bit of a damp squib yeah. up here. I don't know about anywhere else in the country, but it was just a light wind and some rain. It wasn't much at all really, was it? We had some gusts for about two hours, I yeah. think, in the evening and that was it. Well, this is beautiful, it's really lovely. So this weed is floating pennywort and it's a real problem on the canals. It's what we've been struggling to get through for a while and it's a foreign invasive species and it just takes over, it smothers the canal, it makes it difficult for our wildlife and our fish. Uh, but they're clearing it up, I think it costs something like a thousand pounds for a hundred meters to clear. So there's actually they're taking donations for people to help clear it off. Fortunately, now the cold weather is coming, it does die back a bit. But it should not be here. That's a lovely little boat, friend. That's gorgeous, isn't it? That would make a nice little weaving painting studio. It, oh, 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 now you're talking. <laughs> when that duckweed is covering the entire canal, you can see Archie standing on the back, debating whether he can walk on it or not, don't you? you it must just, be confusing. Jess yeah. has in the past. She tried to walk across ponds years ago when we were gardening that were covered with it, and she just saw it was grass. But the ducks eat it, but they're not doing a very good job, are no, they? No, no. Do you want to eat that, though? No. <laughs> stuff. What are they asking for a bit of bread? Well, that's again? taking foraging to the extreme, I think. <laughs> Talking of foraging, pink flowers are Himalayan balsam, and uh, it's covered itself across the United Kingdom, especially in shady areas like forests, woodlands, etc. But uh, you've been eating it, haven't you, lately? Oh, yes. 
Yeah, everything has its benefits, doesn't it? So it, it is a problem plant and it is, again, smothering out native species. But the bees love it. So there is a good side to it. It's a really good food for the bees. And the seeds and the seed pods are edible and really good for you. And there are stories of people that have got lost, not in this country, out in the wilderness, and have survived by eating those seeds. So I have tried them and they're just a little bit nutty. And I think I'm going to try gathering some and just putting it on top of uh, bread when I bake it, because I always have a sprinkling of seeds on it. So we're going to try that. They're really good for you. But I will show that when I have a go. Things a little bit nutty. <laughs> Better than being seedy, isn't it? <laughs> what a lovely cruise. It is. It's delightful. It's We're not... talking about the fire. We've, I've chopped all that wood up, as we said earlier because every morning we light the fire and get it warm and then just let it die out and it's enough isn't it for the yeah, day because the metal of the stove gets really hot and yeah. then just keeps the uh, the cabin room the cabin warm and that then does us for the day and then we tend to light it sort of seven o'clock at night don't we just to uh, take the chill off again it's a bus cafe Go and investigate, I think. Yeah. How fab is this? We've got cake. How's that then, Fran? That is fab. That's proper boaters' lunch. This is <laughs> sausage sandwich, sausage fat, or whatever you call it. Bum. That's a veggie bun, by the way, and um, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. Superb. <laughs> See you later. Cheers. Well, that's us done for the day. Nice little mooring spot, nice and quiet. And pretty, pretty too.